After the 3-1 defeat to Manchester City, it was abundantly obvious to Manchester United fans just how far behind City Manchester United are at the moment. But how has this been allowed to happen in Manchester? Obviously, the Sheikh Mansour taking over Man City back in 2008 and the money that's come in made a big difference. But right now, Manchester City are doing everything right. Everything's working under Pep Guardiola and they are playing sensational football. But how far behind City are Manchester United and what needs to happen to bridge that gap and to get Manchester United back on top where fans are so used to seeing Manchester United. Now to discuss this I'm joined by ESPN's Manchester correspondent Rob Dawson who's thankfully given up a little bit of his time today to chat through this with me. Thank you very much Rob. Pleasure. Uh, let's get straight into it. You know th the first thing I want to talk about is the academy because you see Manchester United's academy for years you know it, it back to the Busby Babes, back through to the class of 92 and consistently under Warren Joyce with the under 21s and under 23s and the under 18s with Paul McGuinness, United were sensational with the academy. Not too many players came through to the first team, but you know, recent example is Marcus Rashford and the success that he's had there. Man City opened their complex back in 2014-15 and it's changed the scope of academy football in Manchester. It was always previously Manchester United, for any kid in Manchester growing up, that's the club they want to join to get better as a professional. But now Man City is arguably the better destination. Now, do you think that United's academy in its current state, Rob, is good enough in comparison to City? And if not, what do you think needs to be done to improve that? I think they've certainly had a wake-up call. I mean, you, you, you talk there about you know, historically United being the place to be for kids, and, and that, was, that was true at one point. Um, you know, I'm mid thirties when I was a kid that the, the junior football pitches on a Saturday and Sunday morning were dominated by United Scouts, United Coats. And that's where that's where kids wanted to go. Kids wanted to, to be picked up by United and play for United. There has been a shift in that recently. Um you see an awful lot more City Scouts on, on junior pitches on a on a Saturday and Sunday morning. There is an awful lot more competition for United to attract just, I mean, just talking about kids in Manchester, which is obviously a pretty small sample size when you look at the entire world. But there is a massive, a massive competition now. Part of that is the facilities that you've mentioned at City, you know, that that complex, you know, obviously this will be watched by United fans and United fans will have to admit that complex is, is a fantastic facility. The facilities they've got for, for the first team all the way down to the lowest age groups are unbelievable. Um, and, and that, that is a part of it you know they when you're attracting a kid to a that to play schoolboy football part of it is the how they're going to get looked after the opportunities they're going to have and city are are doing that better than united at the moment um i think that's the people at united realize that i think in particular since nicky buck came in i think he was appointed what february 2016 since he's come in it's, it's something that he's he's wanted to work on because obviously he's been through that in the in the past as well. He'll know what it was like when he was coming through that 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 um, level of football and, and obviously why he picked United to to City. Um, so it is something that they're trying to address. I think there was there was comments from from Nicky after uh, after the derby at a, a coach's function in London where he basically said the same thing that you know Everton United had a bit of a wake up call because of this facility that City have built because of the the effort they're putting into recruiting kids in Manchester um, and where once. You know, United had the pick of kids in Manchester, now they don't. Um, and there is an awful lot of competition. You know, you, you only have to look at, there was a story a couple of couple of years ago now where lots of United's first team players, kids were were going to City to play schoolboy football rather than United. Now, at the time, it was presented as a bit of a joke. You know, I think you play, players like um, Robin Van Persie, Darren Fletcher, they're going to City rather than United. At the time, it was presented as a little bit of a joke. But United, they found that incredibly embarrassing. You know, and that, that, showed them the state of play that that these first team players who really their kids should have been playing at United wanted them to go to City because in their eyes it was a a better bet. Um so th things are being addressed. There are there are there are problems in Manchester for, for United. Um saying that you've also mentioned there about about Marcus Rashford. You know it was it was embarrassing to United last season that the under 23s were relegated. You know it, results aren't aren't the main thing at that level and, and you know it's it's a Something that is spouted out by academy coaches again and again, and, and it is true. Um, but that said, that that was embarrassing. On the flip side of that, though, got McTominay, who who started the season in reserves, played twenty odd first team games. Now, ultimately, the idea of the academy is is to get players into the first team. Um, City have made 
vast improvements to their their academy and the way they structure things, the kids they've brought in, the number of kids they've brought in. But ultimately, they haven't produced the amount of first team players even recently that United have. You know, their their big hope is is Phil Foden, who is clearly a, a very talented footballer, still very young. They're hoping that that he is going to be a key part of their first team squad. Well, at United, you've already got Marcus Rashford, who you mentioned, Jesse Lingard, who are playing upwards of 50 games a season. They are integral parts of, of United's first team squad and also full internationals, you know, going to World Cups, um, helping England do very well at World Cups as well. So there are two sides of it. You, you, there is a lot made in Manchester of some of the results, perhaps, that, that City's academy sides have had against United. You know, it's it's eye-catching when you see that a City under-13 team have beat United 8-2. You know, there's no doubt that it's an eye-catching result. Um, but ultimately, the job for Nicky Butt and his staff and his coaches is to produce players for the first team. And as it stands, United are doing that better than City at the moment. Now, whether that is a complicated subject because you have to wait. It's not You can't just look at it and go, oh, United are better and, and City are, are falling behind because these things take time to, to come to fruition. So if City have been better, it, it seems from the outside, at recruiting players, for the last few years now, they all hope that that will turn into a first team squad in, in you know five ten years, where the bulk of that is made up of academy graduates. Um, obviously, you can't you can't ever tell with a young player. You don't know um, how good they're going to be, whether they're going to make it. There is some envious glances from United side across the city to, uh, to to City and that training complex and the things that they're doing, which will be a worry. It will be an even bigger worry if in five years that City are bringing player after player after player through into their first team and United, that kind of production that production role has stalled a little bit. But as it stands, United are still better at bringing players through to the first team. And you, and you can you can see that just from, from the first team statistics. I suppose, yeah, it's, it's, it's more a case of when, when it comes to the academy, anyway, looking forward, City do have the better facilities. So it's, it's how United at this point in time bridge that gap to make sure that we are still producing the Lingards and the Rashfords and people who actually come through to the first team squad. Um, obviously the first team squad is, is what everybody looks at every weekend. That was a 3-1 defeat and we saw just how much better Pep Guardiola's signings are working for Man City in comparison to how Jose Mourinho's are working at Manchester United. They've both spent big amounts of money, but Guardiola's seem to be fitting his system a hell of a lot better. You know, what do you think needs to change in regards to maybe United's recruitment, recruitment policy because the money is there, but it doesn't really seem like the players are fitting in as well as the players are fitting in at City with Guardiola. Yeah, I mean, and I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there about what, what's happened to United in the, in the last five years since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. The one thing that United have not done well since, since Sir Alex retired is, is recruit. Um, you know, even going back to that first transfer window that they gave David Moyes, you know, from there to, to now, there just hasn't seemed a particularly joined up approach in how they're doing things. You, you can't, as a fan, I would be very frustrated at uh, having looked at United for, for those five years and just think I, I, you cannot see a clear plan in place in how they're signing, deciding to, to target these players and then to, to sign them. Whereas at City, you know, some, some of the signings haven't worked out. You, you never know with, with signings and, and when you're spending money, but there is there does seem to be a clear plan there about how they go about recruiting players. Um, and, I, and I think that really in a nutshell is where City have been far better than United since Alex Ferguson retired. Um, and I think we're going to you know, talk later about maybe some of the, the, the reasons why, why that's happened. Um, ultimately, for Alex Ferguson leaving United, I feel has left a huge hole in the, in the entire organisation. Um, that, that he had kind of built United around himself and that he he was so influential in so many different departments and had been so well about um, about handing off bits of the responsibilities to other people that, that he kept the control that that he wanted um, and that, you know, whoever whoever was going to come in after that, and not just David Moyes, the, the managers that have come in since, we're always going to find it very, very difficult to slot into that, um, that football club. At City, they seem to have had a very clear idea of what they wanted to do when they when, when the takeover was completed in 2008 that you can almost see that they systematically went through 
managers that they needed at that time. You know, Roberto Mancini filled a very particular need at the time, was successful. They were happy to, to let him go to bring Manuel Pellegrini in, who again, that almost felt like a transition to the time when they wanted to bring Pep Guardiola in. There just there seems there seems to have been a very very clear plan at, at City with how they wanted to to take the club forward. I think even now, obviously they would never tell you now because Pep Guardiola is has got a new contract and all that. I'm pretty sure that at City they they've got a plan for beyond Pep Guardiola, a pretty clear plan I would imagine in terms of who they want to replace him, the players that they want to sign once he's gone, to make sure that this success that they're having carries on. Whether that is true at United, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. No, I'd, I'd be very surprised if anything, because it feels like United don't even have a current plan, let alone a plan for two, three years line, down the line, if, or however long Jose Mourinho is around, in terms of his replacement. But something I've always felt quite strongly about is I feel like Manchester United have failed to modernise the structure of the club behind the scenes. Because when Fergie went, so did David Gill, and then you've got the two men who were responsible on and off the pitch for Manchester United, and, he, and it worked seamlessly with both of them. But without both of them, we have struggled. You know, you look at the likes of Bayern Munich, you look at the likes of Man City, and then you look at Arsenal in the summer as well. They've all got sporting directors or directors of football that work in unison with the manager and the club to make things work seamlessly, as you said there. Yet United have still got Ed Woodward in a position of power with footballing decisions, an ex-banker who worked with the Glazers the whole way through, obviously very loyal to the Glazers. But he's in charge of the footballing decisions at the club. Now, what do you think needs to change in terms of the club's structure to help lay the right sort of foundations for change moving forward? Do you think that United need something like a sporting director, for example? Yeah, I mean, you, you used the word there, modernise, which I think just sums up what, what has happened at United. Um, and I, th I think what, what we're seeing now is maybe the downside to Sir Alex Ferguson being so successful, if, if there is a downside that football clubs in 1986 are very different to what they are now. And when he came in in 1986, he was everything. You know, it was a case of him wanting to sign a player, picking up the phone to the chairman and saying, look, can I have this amount of money? Him saying yes or no. Alex Ferguson then speaking to agents, to players, doing the deal and sorting it all out. And he was, I think it's hard to overemphasize how important he was or centrally was to that entire football club, and there was a there's a an anecdote from from David Gill, I think, when when they were trying to rename the, the Sir Alex Ferguson stand after him, that David Gill was so worried that he that Fergie would find out what was happening because he knew that Fergie was so influential in the entire club that there was no way that you could possibly have a secret from from Fergie because he knew absolutely everyone and he knew absolutely everything, and he it was almost like a military operation keeping this from Fergie, even getting the, the people into to pin the sign on the top of the stand, he knew that at some stage Fergie would know, and he, it, it just it, it just showed me when he when I heard him speak about that how how important he was. Um, the problem with with Fergie at the end was that he, he at the end he was almost like a director of football that he he passed a lot of the coaching, the day to day coaching off to coaches that he, he knew and respected very well, the likes of Rennie Muhlenstein, Mike Phelan those people and, and ultimately he, he had kind of delegated an awful lot of the day-to-day -day responsibility and he was you know he, he was functioning really as a director of football um when they got David Moyes and David Moyes wanted to do a, he took on that kind of central role but wanted to, to do a lot of the coaching as well wanted to have a hand in transfers contract negotiations and while other football clubs through 20 odd years that Fergie was at United while other football clubs took the chance, took the break in momentum to modernise and to bring in football directors or technical directors, sporting directors, whatever you want to call it. United missed that because there was no break in momentum of being so successful that they ever needed to change the way that, that Fergie was doing things. You, you're right again that they that they missed a trick in, in that when Fergie went, David Gill went. And obviously, I think a lot of fans will would tell you that they think that that was a mistake and that to lose one of those men was was always going to be pretty catastrophic to lose both in the same summer with was I, I'm not I'm still not entirely sure how that was allowed to happen that you had a, a new manager in David Moyes who was getting used to a football club Ed Woodward again who was thrown into this role that he, he was not used to and and 
it's been very, very difficult to kind of claw for United to claw that ground back. Um, yeah, we've started to hear noises now that United are going to start looking at modernising the way that they're they're structured. You know, appointing a football director or a director of football, however you want to phrase it, to to oversee, just to be a link really between Ed Woodward and, and the manager, and to oversee a recruitment policy that doesn't just look at here and now, that it looks further forward. Um, and you have to feel sorry for Jose Mourinho a little bit in terms of last summer that he's obviously a manager who whose unique selling point is instant success. He has instant success wherever he goes. And he knows that he's not going to be United for 10 years. He knows that you know, he's going to have three, four, five years stint and then be gone. And because of that, he wants to, pl- he wants to sign players who, want, who, who are able to win now, which is why we saw in the summer him targeting a lot of players who are you know, towards the later stages of the career, you know, 28, 29, 30 years old. You know, clearly, that isn't a long-term plan for United to sign a lot of third old. But as far as Jose Mourinho goes, he's looking at winning the title as quickly as possible. And if he thinks that signing 30-year-old William is a better bet than having 22-year-old Anthony Marshall in the team, then you kind of got, got to respect that because ultimately he's been thrust into this job where that is his decision. This summer, we kind of saw a little bit of a breakdown with that, with Jose asking for, for players who were who he thought would have brought instant success and, and Ed Woodward, you know, not just him, but the team that he has around him kind of saying, well, we don't really want a team with the average age of 30, 31. We want to look a bit further ahead and, you know, we don't want to sign Jerome Boateng because you might only get 40 games out of him. We don't really want to sign Toby Alderweireld because he's he's 30 years old and, you know, we may only get two, two, two and a half, three years out of him. That's where there's been a, a little bit of a a breakdown, and and that is where I think a director of football would help. You know, he would help the manager get the players he wants. He would help a PZ Woodward and and sign players who have got a long term future at the football club. Without that that link at the moment, it almost feels like United are, are treading water a little bit. Yeah, I, th- I think exactly what you were saying there was something I was going to bring up as well, and it, it goes back to the previous point there about this lack of a single vision at the club. You know, take, as, you, as you mentioned there, Jose Mourinho in the summer, a man who you bring in, you know exactly what you get when you sign Jose Mourinho as your manager. It's not going to be pretty, but he's going to bring you success straight away. You've just got to back him. It's going to be expensive. You might not always agree with the signings that he makes. And that's where it seems like after two summers, Ed Wilber this summer decided, oh, actually, Manchester United is a club that's based its history on the promotion of youth and younger players. I'm going to go back to that. But you can't decide that two years in. And that ties into this concept. It's not even a concept. We've seen it in the the last four years of reality is that United don't really have that plan. Because if you had a vision or a plan, you wouldn't make a U-turn like we did this summer. Do you really think that that lack of a single vision or a plan is responsible for what's happened since Fergus retired at Manchester United and, and, and why we find ourselves a few years behind Man City, really? Yeah. 100% 100% and you know from watching United from the outside for the last five years the whole approach to recruitment has, has seemed scattergun you know they they gave David Moyes that first summer obviously he felt that he wasn't particularly well back that summer then they ended up having to go and sign Juan Mata that that January you know United have never really splashed that amount of money in January before Juan came then Louis van Gaal was allowed to sell absolutely anyone he wanted and sign absolutely anyone he wanted without anyone kind of saying, well, hang on, well, you know, you might not think that Danny Welbeck is a 50 goal a season striker, but, you know, he's come through our academy. He is part of our vision for the future. You know, I'm not saying pick him up, but we feel like he's a, a useful squad player. Please work with him. Then Jose comes in and clears the board almost with with most of Louis van Gaal's signings because for whatever reason he doesn't fancy them, which is fair enough. Again, you know, managers like some players and, and don't like others. And now you we're in this ridiculous situation really where in a derby against City last weekend, the weekend before, sorry, Jose Mourinho is picking a team with or a squad, sorry, with the signings of four four different managers, Fergie, David Moyes, Louis and, and himself, and it's it's a mismatch. It's a mishmash of, of players, of 
of styles, of ideas. You know, Louis, Louis van Gaal signed a lot of players because he wanted to play three at the back occasionally. Jose Mourinho doesn't do that very often and canned everyone that, that, that Louis had signed. It, you talk about a single vision there, and, and there just there hasn't been that since since Fergie retired. Um, the, the issue that, that United have got is that I think when they when Fergie retired, they thought that it, they could recreate what he had done, which is the reason why they signed or they they, they hired David Moyes. They they gave him a big long contract. The, the quote that they gave was off the record about why they hired him was that David Moyes was, was cut from the same cloth as Sir Alex. Now they thought that they were hiring another Sir Alex Ferguson and that you know that he may be able to create this another dynasty. That is is unrealistic in in today's football. I think I don't think that we're ever going to see a manager just hang around at a football club for 20, 25 years. I think you'd be lucky to get five years out of a manager these days. And because if you, because you've got managers on on short three, four, five year deals or, or you know staying at a club for five years, and you've got players who conceivably have playing careers of you know, ten plus years. There's there's a disconnect there about managers coming in and, and getting rid of players who are going to have longer careers than them. So there has to be someone above the manager and who, who well, in between the chairman and and the manager, who can see past that, who can who can give a manager the best possible resources to to be successful right now, but also have the responsibility to look for, further ahead and say, well, you know, you might not like Anthony Marshall, but we think that in 10 years' time, he's going to be fantastic. Or Luke Shaw, you know, fair enough, you don't fancy him as a player now, but we're not going to let you sell him because we think that in the right environment that he's going to be very good. So you're going to have to work with these players. You're allowed to sign who, who you want and, and tell us who you want and we, we'll work with you. But there are certain things that, that we're going to insist happen as well. And, and that, it feels like that as that has been missing. Um, and, you know, you, you only have to look at some of the, the things that, that Jose Mourinho said. One of the first things he said when he came in was that, that there were players, the recruitment decisions made at Manchester United in the 18 months before he came that he just would never have made in a million years. And that says everything. You know, he came, he's, he's inherited a squad, a squad of players that he wasn't particularly keen on. He, he will feel he's tried his best to... To mould it in his own in his own vision and the way that he wants the, the squad to be structured and, and the team to play, and now you're left in this in this strange situation where this summer we've seen him kind of been backed a little bit with with Fred and the, the money to sign that midfielder, but not fully backed that that he gets everything he wants. And again, it just feels like it feels like the football club is is treading water a little bit and kind of people at the club, the fans are kind of just waiting for the the fog to clear a little bit and to to see further forward because at the moment you speak to fans on the street and at games and, and they're they're kind of just waiting now um because 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 the football club seems so stuck and again i use that to, that treading water that they're kind of just standing still um and and for a lot of fans that's that's how it feels at the moment I mean, it, you know from a fan looking in it it seems quite obvious that Manchester United need to make these changes behind the scenes, but for whatever reason, it hasn't happened so far. But, uh, you know, we can all live in hope that in the next, probably next summer, surely something has to change. You saw it with Arsenal. Arsenal have done it this year. You know, they had a man in Arsene Wenger who created his club for two decades, and then Emery's come in, and nobody expected him to do so well so quickly, but players are playing for Emery, and the system that Emery is creating is working very well there. And I, I suppose that's what United wanted to do after Fergie went, went with Moyes, but it just didn't work. But with everything that's going on right now with Man City and Guardiola, as we pointed out here, there's a distinct lack of a single vision at the club and a distinct lack of a character who's between the manager and the board who makes sure that that vision never gets lost in any decision that's getting made. That doesn't happen at the moment. Uh, recruitment certainly needs to improve. That has, as you say, scattergun approach is, is being polite. It's been awful. You know, from Di Maria and Falcao to all the other signings that haven't really worked out at Manchester United. That needs to improve, especially with everything that's going on at Man City. But, you know, how far behind Man City do you think United are? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you very much, Rob, for your time today. Hopefully this video offered you a little bit of insight into the goings-on behind Manchester United and what really is the problem at the club right now. Because if you think it's just Jose Mourinho, you're a little bit wrong.